Yeah. Hey everyone, uh, firstly I want to say thanks very much for coming out in the rain, um, but you know I, 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 I'm hoping to find a few strays going down the road there now in a minute, I'll have no choice by the time I'm finished with them, but I just want to say thanks very much, it's really important like and like I know it's a crappy weather and it's really, I won't say, but like the thing is the weather doesn't wait for no one when they're sick. When I was sick, the, the rain, the sleet or snow didn't matter. I was still sick at the end of it. The 18 women are still dead. Uh, you know, they've passed by the end of it. There's 221 women still affected, even though it's raining. Do you know what I mean? We need to get out no matter what the weather is. During the summer, it was too warm. Now it's too wet. We need to all stand together. It's a half an hour of your time. Thanks very much, though, who has come. Um, I suppose I just want to say, um, you know, I'm getting huge support of people, um, you know, people that I've never met, people I've never spoke to. Um, there's people after coming from Ballin College, Mayfield, y'all, you know, there's people really after making an effort to come today to show the support, not just for me, but stand in solidarity for every woman affected. Um, it's just phenomenal, the support. But I, do, I think it does hit so many lives. It's, it's, it's not just um, the 221 women that are affected. It affects everyone. It affects every woman in this country that are waiting for phone calls to see are they going to be involved? Are they going to be one of the women added on? Like there's another 3,000 slides being sent off um, to be reviewed and this, that and the other. Like 3,000, how many of them 3,000 are actually going to be added to the 221? I'd be afraid to think. Um, even men need to get involved. I do see some men here today and you know there's some men always come and stuff like but you know it, it's important for the men to come out. It could be your wives, it could be your mother, your granddaughter, your sister, your daughter, your niece or just a good friend. It's very important like and I don't think like people realize it until it actually hits them in their doorstep you know. We need to sh show support now. Um, myself I found out on the 10th of May this year I was one of the women um, affected. Um, at that stage it was only 209 um, but I was one of the women and um, when I left that day I did leave with huge relief because I had a fear that day that I was being diagnosed again um, because it gave back a deja vu of when I was diagnosed. Um, so I left with relief but maybe days after then it really really the anger set in and I was like oh my god how could they do this how could they do that you know um, whereas now I have so much fire in my belly and determination and I, I'm on a mission that no one is going to stop me. Um, it's just so disappointing to see that the HSC and the government are still lying and still scheming against us. I did get some answers um, in the last week or two because I have gone so public and I urge every woman involved and affected that they should to stand up and, and, and talk and, and get their voices heard because it's the only way we're going to get our answers is if we all unite together. We are the women that are affected, we are the women of Ireland and we are the future of Ireland. Um, I think we deserve accountability, we deserve transparency, Sorry. <laughs> um, but most of all, we deserve honesty and respect because personally, myself, I have not received any of the above. I told you I am getting answers, but I have to scream and shout and bring my kids out in the rain to get these answers. That's not good enough. I should be getting an acknowledgement and I should be give like, I'm not saying us women that are affected should be treated like royalty or, you know, anything special. We deserve respect and we deserve dignity. I've no dignity coming out here screaming and shouting. I've no dignity where I've actually had a slip of the tongue. I've cursed a few times out here in front of a load of kids. This isn't good. Us women of Ireland and us the whole community of Ireland should be standing together, not, not only if it affects them personally, we should be standing together affected or not affected. Um, since I found out, I have tried, you know, to get more and more info, and they are bird feeding me the info, you could say, um, and that's only because I'm gone so public. I was questioning a doctor from cervical check last week, and I'd say his jaw is still on the ground up in the clinic because he was probably wondering where is your one coming with all these questions. But I'm telling you now, I'm no fool, and us women of Ireland aren't fools, and we know what's what, and we know when there's lies being told. 
Um, I also found out that Ameri the American Lab Quest have lost my slide, my second slide that I've been fighting to find out. They've lost it, so now that gives me a prevention from independently getting it reviewed. I don't think that's good enough. And I wouldn't have found this out, only I have been fighting and screaming to find out. Um, I just want to put it like this, like, who's been made accountable, like, who's actually been um, punished for this? Yeah, Tony O'Brien had to give up his job but with a big fat check to go with it. Um, like, if an airplane took off now and, and, and if an airplane took off and it crashed and the, the ground crew knew that the wings were, were faulty, Who's going to be accountable? It's the it's the people working in the airline. It's the it's the ground crew that are responsible. If 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 um, a, bu a bus took off and the brakes broke, I I've repeated myself now. The brakes broke and the crash broke or crashed with 200 bus crashed with 221 people in it. Who's accountable? It's bus Erin or CIE or whoever's in charge of that bus. The people, the mechanics who knew the brakes were broken were going to be taken accountable. So I can understand why there's hundreds and hundreds more to come of lab results have been um, withheld from the women for, uh, who has their right to have them, who has been lied and schemed against and there has been no consequences happened to them labs or the cervical check, might I add. This isn't right. Everyone should be accountable for every mistake that happens. There has to be someone accountable. And the HSE wouldn't be long pointing the finger if it wasn't then. I want to know which minister is going to own up to the mistake. I find it so hard to believe that no one is owning up to the mistake. There's no way that the whole HSC and the government and every bloody minister that thinks they're brilliant in this country is unaware that it happened. That is so, so silly. Like, there's a few kids here today and even even they would, they'd have more cop on than them. Do they think we're stupid? We need accountability. Why do I have to beg for info? Why is it that I have to come out to protest? I want to know, why aren't the, the guards being sent in to the, to the government, why aren't they going into Wicklow to Simon Harris's constituency, which I found out, so Simon, watch out, I'm on the way. Um, and I'm finding out where every single one of you is, might I add. Um, why, why, why aren't the guards going in? Why aren't they taking their, their, the information out, the evidence we deserve? Why aren't people being arrested? This has been an intentional cover-up, attempted murder, and murder in some cases. And there's no TD or councillor or bloody government will say different because it has. If it was your family member or your friend, you'd say the same. There has been lives lost and it's not one bit fair that these lives have been lost. There's children without their mothers and there's husbands without their wives. Um, we put our trust into the system. Like, fair enough, mistakes can happen. There is human error. But my, my anger and my distraught is the fact they withheld this from us. They're trying to say that it was 2016 and that my letter got lost in my file. My le letter didn't get lost in my file because I had illegal action and there was no letter in my file. So they got caught with that lie. But they're trying to say, oh, it happened in 16, this, that and the other. My, my results on my file says 2012, the Irish Screening Service found out of the mistake. In 2012, the cervical check found out of my mistake. So don't be under any illusion that it was 2016 what you're being told. Mine was in 2012. And in actual fact, the doctor that I spoke to told me that the actual slide that went missing was noted in the screening service in 2012. So I do do my homework. Um, I do I do count myself very lucky. Um, I really do. And do you know what? I got a lovely message last night in bed. I was late enough of this woman who saw my radio, who did see my radio interview uh, yesterday. Might I add, I did not expect it to be video. I would have had a bit of a slap on anyway. But she was saying, she's another woman affected, you know, and she was saying, she said, look, I heard your radio, she said, and my heart does go out to Paul and, and Stephen and, and there's other men, you know, whose wives have passed away and children without their mother. And she said, you know, it is heartbreaking for them. But she said, don't you let 
let anyone else think that you're not suffering and you're not, you're not, you know, don't be putting yourself down. She said, you have a right to scream and shout like everyone else does. And do you know what she does? My kids suffer. A, a, a picture came up on Facebook the other day of my two kids in 2011, which was the day I started my treatment, to see how small my kids are and how big they are now. I've missed out on so much in the last seven years, and I really have because I've been through the mills, I've been up and down, I've had depression, I've had illnesses, I've had so much in the last seven years that I physically and mentally could not be there for my children. So there has been a loss. I can't have any more children. I would have liked to have that choice. Maybe I mightn't have had any more, maybe. But I, that choice was taken from me. I might have wanted more children. And to think that this could have all been avoided if they actually did their jobs, if they didn't try to cheap skate it by sending our, 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 our slides to America. That's not good enough, like, it's anything to save a bit of buck, but then they won't save us, then when they tax this and tax that and put prices up for this, that and the other. We're paying for our own mistakes, you could say. All the taxes we're paying, and we're paying for this to happen. Um, but as I said, I do count myself lucky. But I do have a lot of bone conditions and I am crippled a lot of the time. Um, when family members or friends you know, become pregnant and have newborns first, it does affect me. Um, my sister will vouch for that, like it was her second last baby I think it was. And I, I, I kind of pulled back an awful lot when the baby was really small and I think she felt it but she just didn't realise where I was coming from, do you know what I mean? Like it just, it's just that few weeks, you know, that, that connection you have with a newborn. I'll never have that. I'll never have a pregnancy feeling. I'll never have that. It's been taken away from me. I'm going through the menopause since I'm 26 years of age. And I'm actually going to be going through the menopause till I'm at least in my 15th, I was told. The, the doctor couldn't get over that the hospital, my aunt was with me, about four years ago, were testing me for the menopause. They were doing bloody pregnancy tests and not hormone level checks. So they tried to tell me I wasn't going through the menopause to find out a few months ago I'm still going through the menopause. Look, I just want to leave it there. Um, we are going to stop the traffic, the little view that's here. We are going to do it. I have a few uh, balloons there for the kids to make some noise. And this is especially for you, Simon Harris and Leo Bartiker and the rest of you farts up there. We're coming for you and we're going to make us enough noise. Thanks very much. Than us. That's not good enough. We need every woman 
every man and every child to stand here together with us today. Will we hit the market? We need to, we need to get every man, every woman and every child to stand together with us, united. And we need, we need to do it for this country. We need to show the government, Leo, Simon, all the rest of the facts, as I call them, that we need our answers and we deserve our answers. Thanks to everyone who marched with me today. And this is not the end. Thank you. From then on, things were different. I still didn't really know much, but it was scary at the time. Carol always had a brave face, and that kind of helped us all be that little bit braver. I am 19 years old now, and throughout the years, I've watched my sister suffer, cry in agony in hospital in too many occasions. She's so young, she shouldn't be living a life like this. Sometimes she can't even get up off the chair because her bones are just that bad, and it's heartbreaking. Another thing that's heartbreaking is that as a young lady, I can't even trust my own healthcare system. I have young nieces and a little sister, and they only have us to make a change and an impact in their life. The healthcare have shown so little interest or even emotion into what has happened with the circle check standard, which is embarrassing. It's almost downgrading how little remorse they have shown for those who have been affected and for those who have lost their life. With the healthcare system we have, why would anyone want to start a family here when you can't even give them your trust? What we need is a change, and what we need to do is make a difference, and that's why we're all here. Carl, I just like to say I'm so proud of you and everything that you've done the last couple of weeks. The effort you have given, you really have given this your all and I would like to thank everyone else who came, we all appreciate that. I was to Brian Polly two weeks ago uh, to Mags and Maureen and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually overwhelmed with the support I got down there but there's this lovely woman, Bridget, she had wrote the poem to all of us supported from this male standard. So I just like to read it and then I had, um, dear girl, sorry, I suppose that's definitely sorry, dear girl, Keith is going to read another poem that she wrote inspired by all this. Um, just a second then, I'm sorry. Are you aware this is a vital scandal concerns all of us? Are you willing to accept this atrocity without picking up a fuss? Why are the people of Ireland so complacent? It's incomprehensible to understand. Are you not incensed at how they dealt with the scandal? Do you think it was okay that vital facts were withheld? This was so devious, culpable and underhand. Maybe you don't think it's important because thankfully this hasn't happened to you. 
Secretary, sorry. Cervical screening is a must, but we need to believe the results will be honest. We need to have a system in which we can trust. Let's not be hoodwinked. It could be your life that's at stake. All it takes is another cock up, then it could become potentially another fake mistake. It's time for everyone to wake up. The system really needs a good shake up. Seriously, and women need justice right now for the wrongdoing, the cover ups, and the lies. This has caused devastation to so many lives. Where is our Irish spirit? Do we have any sense of pride? We need to honour those women who are now suffering and those who have needlessly died. To the government officials we say, no more. Delayed, deferred, denied. We want the truth from those who blatantly lied. So come on people of Ireland, show your loyalty and support. Stand up and let your voices be heard. We need to make the government understand we want open disclosure. This debacle needs transparency and total exposure. So, how do you think today went? I think it went okay, uh, considering the weather and stuff. But I, I would like to urge, you know, more people don't let the weather stop them. You know, what I mean, the weather doesn't stop for people to be sick or not sick. It's important. Um, there was a few here today, and I, I you know, we marched and we, I shouted, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to let the government know whether it's one or ten people behind me. I want my answers, and I deserve them. So this is Middleton that we marched to today, and you're from Middleton. Oh, yeah. Have you, do you feel that you have the support of the people of Middleton behind you? I do, like, I have support, like, where people are, like, sending me messages left, right and centre and this, that and the other, but I think it, it would mean a lot more to me if people actually put feet on the street. Um, you know, I am very grateful of every everyone and stuff to show the support and don't get me wrong, but I think it's important, not just for me, but for every woman in this country, to you know, that we, we try and stand together, you know? I, I do have huge support and, and I've made friends with people I never knew and they did you know they're actually brilliant you know and the standing for women are very supportive and stuff. And what would you like to see happen now as in regards to the government? I would like someone to be made accountable, I'd like people to be fired, i like the guards to go into wherever they have to and take the evidence that they need out because the government are still lying against us and they're still scheming against us and they think we're going to push it under the carpet and forget about it but it, it can't be like there's too many lives affected from this and if there was something that you could say to Simon Harris at this moment in time what would you say to Simon Harris acknowledge us we're only a number to them we're only a piece of a name on a piece of paper to them we're more than a number we deserve a bit of respect and dignity like even if, like we don't deserve like Royalty, but like even a simple phone call or an acknowledgement, you know, someone to actually personally apologise to us, own the mistake. But we're not receiving any of that. We're only like being told this, that, and the other from our health nurses and stuff. So you want accountability? Yeah, accountability. I want someone to be actually made accountable for this mistake, and some some people to be fired, not to be fired with an extra pension and an extra paycheck like Tony O'Brien was. And what are your plans for for the future? Um, well after today now we are talking, we are going to be going to maybe, I had a gathering in Ballincolly last week, so we're going to be going to Blarney, I'm going to be going to Cardline to other standing women people down there, standing for women down there. Um, so we're going to be going to different places just to make awareness, it's all about awareness for me, trying to get people to realise, you know, how much this does affect people, not just the women affected, but the women, every woman in Ireland is waiting on the call for them to be called in about it. And so then after that we are planning on a big protest and march to a cervical check. Um, and there's talks we are going to be going to the doll, but this is all, we're just trying to get people together, you know, just trying to build up a crowd, you know. Okay, thank you, Carol. Thanks so much. Thank Carol. you very much.